part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Worldwide, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report, now part of the Press Play Podcast Network. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow, and with me is always that guy, that Crimson Avenger from down above me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm north. <laughs> Mr. James Cole. Hey, James. Hey, Tyler. Man, it's, ex- it's going good. It's exciting to be here. We're going to have a great episode. It's exciting because as we've talked about we are now part of a new podcast network that we are excited with. And to kick off this monumentous day, we have the CEO and founder, Mr. Chase Smith. What's up, Chase? Yeah, what's up, Ty? That sounds way too formal, man. Uh, but I, I do appreciate the intro. And, and you know, man, I love, I love Batman. And so I'm not trying to spoil what we're going to do, but, uh, super excited to, to come on the Krypton report and, talk with you guys um so let, let's get to it bro i think this would, this would be technically james's first time podcasting with chase uh yeah. chase this is technically your third time being on the show we did uh, a couple months back we did the meet chase smith where we just talked about podcasting together in our history oh, yeah and then uh a while back you and i did a, an episode of my side podcast the requel where we kind of pitched our idea of a batman movie and you know, for for anyone who's who's listening who hasn't heard Chase and I talk, like uh Batman was kind of a foundation of our friendship when it started. Really was. Batman yeah. and, and playing music. Uh Chase was the one that gave me the long Halloween and Dark Victory to read, which I think mm-hmm. I did both of them in the same night in the dorm. I, I read one and then I came back down and I was like, This is amazing. And you gave me Dark Victory. Um Yes. Which James has has James heard our Batman pitch? <laughs> I th- want to say he did because around the time you and I did that Batman pitch episode, James and I did a one not too long after that on a Man of Steel 2 pitch. It's just been years. I got to dig it back out. Um, Our Batman pitch? The the one we did where we did – we because we talked about our original idea and we talked about if Nolan – if we could make a movie either a sequel to Dark Knight Rises or a movie before Dark Knight Rises. Oh, yeah. Were our ideas. Dude, I still have not to, you know, retread old old podcast, but I still have our pitch uh tie on my desktop. I see it every day and and I, I, I love the concept so much. It's a hybrid of Hush and one of the Arkham games. I forget which one yes. featured Doctor Strange. Um but it, it is just like I, I, I just love it. I love it. And uh it's just in my brain it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Yeah, that's Arkham City, and um, I mean that was a long, if if it was back then, that was a long time ago. Um, and the, I know I, I would have to go it. back and re-listen to it. I probably, I feel like uh, I, I probably did though. I feel like I re I reissued it for lack of a better term as a sure just a proper Krypton Report episode. Like I reused it at, like not too long ago. Um, but anyways, enough about the past. We're here to talk about the future. Let's go. Uh, what we're doing today is what I've called the Batman scorecard. And what it is, is we've taken as part of our preparations for the Batman, which is just now a couple of days away. um, We're ranking different aspects of each Batman. Um, I kind of put the scorecard together. I thought it'd be fun to look at the different aspects. And we actually have the three of us with actually three remote cards. We will be hearing from the voice of Brian, uh, big bad Bri. We will be hearing from the lovely, my other half, Jania, and our good friend from down under, Nate McKenzie from the Superman the Animated Series podcast. So what we're going to do, we'll, we'll start here with our guest. We'll let Chase start, and then we'll go Chase, James, myself, and then the additional cards. So the first one up is Michael Keaton. And with Michael Keaton, he was in the films, of course, Batman and Batman Returns. And this also helps just as a side note um, with Michael Keaton coming back for the Flash movie. It's kind of nice to kind of refresh ourselves with his 
Batman aesthetic. But Michael Keaton, his Batman persona. Chase, you go first. I out of ten, I I gave that an eight out of ten. Um, I and I think a lot of this is a little nostalgia because that's the uh one of the first movies I remember watching. That and Superman we had on the same VHS tape. Um, and like the 1980s HBO movie intro is like cemented in my brain. Is it with um, the Warner Brothers ball cap? No, it's like oh, because that's on the VHS. That, that's what's burned into my brain. Dude. That's <laughs> mine. Me too. No, mine is the, like recorded from HBO. Oh, <laughs> nice. Um, and uh, and so I, I have a very strong, um, you know, just. I, I really, really like Batman 89. It's it's actually my second favorite Batman movie. Um, I was going to – at the very end, I was going to say what our top five movies are. Instead of ranking every Batman movie, yeah, I was well, going like to save and just – like I figured we could do that on the fly. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I love his Batman. His Bruce Wayne was was what I knew until the animated series, um, which I feel like took that and made it better. Um you know, Michael Keaton really didn't change much of his voice, but it was just so freaking cool. And so, uh, I I don't want to start off too strong with with a with with Michael Keaton, but man, I loved his portrayal of of Batman. I I really did, man. So, um, his overall score for me it was a ten. Um, but that was again a lot of nostalgia. Um, that was with a uh, persona of eight, his seven Bruce Wayne, six voice. Gadgets eight, Batmobile is a ten. I love that Batmobile. Um, <laughs> I loved his, his suit in eighty nine. I know they didn't like it because it was really restrictive, but I think that made him more, it made him look less human. Which I I think if you want to, I think one of the fear of Batman is that is that a human? Like what mm-hmm. is this thing that's dark in the alley that's swooping down? Is it flying? Is that a human? Um, and so I I, I kind of liked the more stiff like suit that that he has in 89 mm-hmm. um and the film is is super strong as well so all that together um i gave him a 10 i did i know it was starting off right out of the gate but um i gave him a 10 man and i'm not even ashamed of it i love it all right that's it yeah i'll say i got some things to add but yeah my turn's coming james you're up michael keaton uh, yeah michael keaton um i mean so i gave him an eight for his Batman persona, um, yep. a six in 89 and a seven in Batman returns. Uh, he like his Batman in those movies. Um, he was like a shape. He didn't say much mm-hmm. and he was, he was a shape in the, in the, in the dark, uh, the, the black suit. Um, I preferred the, so both the suits actually got a six for me. Um, I prefer, so like, I prefer the, the body style of the 89 suit over the armored look of the Batman returns, but I prefer the Batman returns, uh, logo Mm. Mm. (laughs) to it. Um, the long ears works for that costume. Um, yes, the, the Batmobiles got a 10. Uh, yes. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an iconic Batmobile, no matter how impractical, um, it actually is being, you know, like three inches off the ground. True. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, James, can I interrupt? I just realized yeah. I'm reading this wrong. The score is like the musical score, not like the overall score. Yes. That's why that was a 10. And I was like, wait, I'm looking at my score and. Like my numbers don't add – like it doesn't make sense that that would be an eight. But no, holy crap. We're talking about the musical score and this – you cannot separate like theatrical Batman or animated Batman from this score. This is – sorry, James. I know I'm just uh, – no, like, You're fine. <laughs> I just like saw the word score and I was like, is that my overall score? No, it is Danny Elfman's like classic legendary score and and that is a ten. Oh, so yeah. I just had to get that out there. Sorry, James. Oh yeah, it. I mean, it's iconic. Oh, it's a it's yeah. a great score. Um, what's what's a quick note with the score is, Chase uh, James and I recently did an episode where we went back and watched the first trailer for every interpretation of Batman, and some of the most interesting thing is the first trailer for Batman and Robin and for Batman Forever both incorporate pieces of the Elfman score into it. 
everything incorporates pieces of the Elfman score into it. I think the only Batman that didn't is uh, Christian Bale, but we'll we'll get we'll, yeah we'll talk about that. But continue, wow. James. We keep interrupting. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> we do. No, no. Um, you know his his voice was good. He he changed it a little bit. He made it gruff. Um, he didn't say much, so you know he he didn't give a lot away. Um, you know, overall the film is one of my top three Batman films. Uh, Keaton is probably my uh, third favorite Batman. So interesting. Um, Why uh so James, do you like Returns better than 89? Um no, I prefer 89 to Returns. Okay. Okay. Um I I, I wasn't a fan I, I, of Returns. The, my score for both of them is actually basically even. Mhm. Um you know, just a couple of points are shifted on different uh different things here on my scorecard. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, they actually came out overall actually as uh, the same. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um. I, I I didn't like the return suit. I don't know. I just love '89. Everything about it. I just I'm I'm all here for it. Um, I like I like the grayish look, like the color of the return suit. Give and, me black. Does it come in black? I want black. <laughs> um. But sometimes very dark gray. What I like, <laughs> what I like about Returns was I I like the the winter setting, the snow on Gotham. Yeah, it's very much a black and white movie in color, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like everything is monochrome. It's either black, it's white. But all right, here I go. Michael, oh, sorry, I just thought of this too. We're forgetting the Prince aspect of the score in '89 as well. Sorry, <laughs> like I saw a score and like I had this whole thing prepared about the music of '89, and now it was just incredible. Uh. Prince did a whole album just for this movie. Like we, like what? That's why. Uh, sadly, that's why when I think eighty nine, I actually have it as like a nine point five instead of a ten because I don't like pop music in certain things because I feel like oh. it, it dates it compared to just orchestral music, and that gave it just a slight <clears throat> tick down. Oh my gosh, it's it screams Joker to me. I mean, like it was perfect. I mean, I did go to Chase's house before, and he's listened to you know, part of me. All hail, new king in town. Just dance around the house, painting. <laughs> Chase was oh here. My oh my gosh, the score of eighty nine. Sorry, I, I, oh, I no. just can't believe I misunderstood. Now, here's uh, my question. Yeah, mm. just the score itself. What do you think works better, eighty nine or returns? And I say that because. Returns is very interesting to listen to because it uses all the themes, like the, you know, the main theme and all that from 89. It's all in there, but then it feels like he's also doing, um, certain callbacks to Tchaikovsky, Tchaikovsky, uh, you know, the Nutcracker because we're set yeah. at Christmas. So I think his musical or his, uh, ability to orchestrate score is stronger in returns. And he elevates what he did in '89. Yeah, I think I think there is more to his score in Returns, um, but well, you know, he outsourced he his, brings he, up because <laughs> he outsourced the other part of his score for '89 with the Prince, True. who just made banger after banger. Are you kidding I mean, me? I mean, part of it's oh no, of I'm not denying it at all. I love uh, my mom loved Prince, so I grew up listening to that. She, uh, my mom. <laughs> My mom took me to, um, I think, you know, I can only remember, I mean, when this movie came out, I was only four years old. So, um, I've always remembered having it on VHS, but my mom took me to see Batman Returns in the theater. Um, and you know, she, we had a good time. She loved Prince. She, oh, we watched the crap out of this VHS, uh, Batman 89. Um, so yeah, I've, I've definitely heard, <laughs> I grew up listening to it. Yeah. Um, Ty, you said you liked the return suit better than 89? No, I like the color, the gray. I think it, cause it's, it's has a cool look to it, more chromish than just the matte black of 89. Like there's a, there's more of a sleekness to the cow that I like, 
than the uh, 89 cal. But here, here's my breakdown. You know what's cool go. about the return suit is they're on hangers. Yeah, they're on bat hangers, and there's a whole <laughs> shelf of Nike <laughs> Jordan cross trainers. Um, so here we go. Michael Keaton. Let's hear it. Persona, 7. Bruce Wayne is 7. Voice is 7. Gadget's an 8. Batmobile a 9.5. Suits, 89 is an 8. Returns is an 8. Um, for back and forth, kind of the same, you know, like we were just talking about. Uh, overall film, I gave it a, his overall films, I give him a 7. Uh, the score, 9.5. Now, here's Genius. Persona, 6. Bruce Wayne, 5. Voice is 6. Gadget's an 8. Batmobile, an eight suit for 89, a six returns a six overall films. She gave eight and she gave the score a 10. Now, Mr. Brian persona's a nine Bruce Wayne, a five voice, eight gadget, seven Batmobile, 10, 89 and eight returns a nine. And then I think he just added his points up for, and didn't really give a film score because for film score, he put 55. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> he really, really, really liked it. I think he, I think he meant I, I, when I looked at his score. I think I uh, assumed it the same way as I was going down it before. But as you're talking, I'm just adjusting a couple of things. But um, I should have just put music. <laughs> I think I should have put he music. Did add, add them all up for the yeah, overall. I just, you know, I should have just put music. But it's cool. It's all in good fun. All right, Mister uh, Nate here. He put Persona Nine. Wayne a seven, voice a seven, gadget a nine, Batmobile a ten. I mean, how like the Batmobile is amazing. Yep. Uh, eighty nine suit a nine, returns an eight, and then overall films is an eight. So, do you remember ever like going to see the Batmobile? Like, if it ever came in your area, and uh, how like excited you were? Yeah, because uh, we went to Tennessee, and there was a museum in Tennessee at Gatlinburg that had yeah. a bunch of movie cars. And mm-hmm. there was a 89, there's a 66 and an 89 Batmobile. Correct. Right? Yes. The 66, I feel like was the one that made a lot of rounds. And then whenever you see the 89 Batmobile, you're like, Oh yeah, that is okay. Whole different league than the, uh, serialized Batman. Yeah. You feel like you just kick some butt and like be yep. safe in the 89, but let's move on to Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer, present in Batman Forever, his one and done film, and you know definitely a shift in the overall uh, batness. And the one thing, like Janine and I have been rewatching the films like off and on, kind of no order. But the one thing I do have to say and point out for Batman Forever is just when I think about Batman Returns, Batman's very stiff, and I just mean like. There's not a lot of stunts. Keaton's not doing a lot of stuff. There's a lot of energy and fighting and movement coming from Batman Forever. Just in the opening scene alone, the way he fights Two Faces Thugs probably has more fighting in it than Keaton did in at all in Batman Returns. Not saying bad or good. I'm just interesting that yeah. pointing out. But Chase, you take it away with Val Kilmer. All right. Batman Persona, I have a six. Bruce Wayne, I have an eight. Voice and gadgets are four. Batmobile three. Suits, uh, Panther and Sun are both a three. Overall film, I give it a five, and the score, I give it a seven. Okay. I really have, uh, you know, Keaton and Bale kind of in leagues of their own as far as what they, the direction they went with Batman. Um, and, uh, I, I couldn't put Kilmer or Clooney or really Affleck to some degree. In, in in that camp, I just couldn't. So it's tough decisions were made, but alas, it's where I landed. Hey, that, it's all subjective. It's all about what you like, and you know, there's there's enough bat to go around. James, what do you got for Kilmer? Um, there's a lot of nostalgia with Kilmer. Um, you know, I was perfect age when this movie came out, and I love the crap out of it. These days, I see a little, <laughs> I see a lot more. Um with it but um the batman persona um i gave him a six uh his bruce wayne i gave him a six um you know batman there's a lot of talking a lot of um uh a lot of lighting and everything Mm -hmm. 
uh, I mean, they, they, they were more referencing kind of like, uh, Batman 66 <laughs> working with the police talking. Um, it, it, he actually had a lot of dialogue as, as Batman, uh, his voice. Um, I mean, it's a four, you know, sometimes he did the, sometimes he changed his voice. Sometimes he didn't in that movie. Uh, the gadgets were kind of cool. Um, he, that was uh, a six and his Batmobile is a seven. Um, I always liked that Batmobile growing up. Uh, the Panther suit is a seven, the sonar suit. I liked it really. I liked it a lot too. That's a seven. Um, the overall film is a six and the score, you know, it was very triumphant. Um, it's something I always remembered, uh, growing up with it. And, uh, I actually gave it an eight. Nice. Nice. You're not too far, uh, from mine. Cause like, like you said, like I had such, I had such a bad time as a child with Batman returns. Like what I've talked about before that when Batman forever came out, it was such a happy, like exciting time and being the perfect age for it. Um, and like you said, you do overlook certain things and then that now you see certain things and you're like, ah, uh, eh, okay. Um, yeah, purely nostalgia. Everything would have been up a point, but <laughs> yeah, but his bat first sauna, I gave it a 6.5. His Bruce Wayne, I gave a 7.5 and I did it because this was like the first time I felt like Bruce Wayne was more Bruce Wayne. Um, yeah, I did like how he was um, and I, involved in the company and things like that. And I pointed out to Jania when we watched it, I'm like, the line that to me is a really great Bruce Wayne moment is when um, they talk about Stickley's suicide and Bruce says to his secretary, he's like, I want full benefits for his family. And she says, but suicide's not covered under our policy. And he says, I know I'll take care of it. Like to me, that's a great representation of Bruce Wayne. Um, but it, which th that's not the like public Bruce Wayne, right? It's it's him and his company working. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's him as the businessman. You know, um, he no, we haven't yet really got to like the Playboy Bruce Wayne. Like Michael Keaton hits on a little bit uh -huh. in his party, but we don't ever see him get to be the business side. And then with Val, we get to see a little bit more of the business side, but we don't really ever get to see the Playboy side. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like we haven't got the there it is Bruce Wayne yet. Uh, let's see his – where am I? His Batman voice, I give a, a six because like you said, he brings it down a little bit. And it's a little bit different than his um, Bruce voice. His gadgets, I gave an 8.5 just because I feel like he, he's got a lot more of them. And a lot of cool stuff like the cape for the fire and the Batmobile. I gave a five. Like I like this Batmobile, but I hate the huge fin on the back because it's just so yeah. impractical. Yep. And the open like ribs, so to speak, of the Batmobile feels like yeah. you could really do some damage. But at the same well, time, I have the nostalgic love for it. Well, I gave but... it a three. So that's that's, that's my <laughs> thought on it. The, right. pan the Panthers... I just remember it being so cool. It, I mean, it, it, as a child, it, I mean, dude, but the I, movie is like the movie looks that way. Everything's neon, everything's lit up. So, I mean, just throw put these put these movies on with my kids, or like show them clips, and like I watched, I made like a little clip thing of all the Batmobiles I watched with the kids the other day. They thought it was awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like they're excited for it, and that's that's the fun of it. You know? You know that's uh, interesting. I Lottie watched my daughter. She's six. She watched Phantom Menace, uh -huh. and uh. And then she watched Attack of the Clones, and she loved Episode Two. Nice. And so, Good choice. like, Good job, just buddy. absolutely loved Attack of the Clones, um, which made me, you know, stop and think, you know, as a, you know, middle aged adult, my lens is different than as a like toddler watching it for the first time, and they like all the crazy like settings and the love story and all that stuff like they don't need it to be shakespeare they just need them to basically do what they do so it's interesting like what lens this is viewed from exactly and that's been my argument for batman and robin because mm -hmm. to me that's the best live action batman to show kids when you other than 60s because my kids can't get into 66 but they'll watch what they call red batman 
because the because the the Blu-ray case art is the is red. You know, it's like the Batman and Robin symbol. It's all red, and then um, Forever is green, and then uh, Returns is like black and white, and then eighty nine is gold. So Solomon, he was little, he would just call him by the color. Yeah, you know, he said, like, "I want to watch Red Batman." And it's just, it's, there it is. It's Batman and it's fun and it's big. And, you know, so for a kid, it's great, you know, and that's, that's, it's yeah. also great because Chase's daughter is like the in between of my two children. Uh-huh. Solomon's seven. Sayla's about to turn five. Chase's daughter six. Yeah. All right. Where my, okay. The Panther suit. I gave it a seven. I like it. If it didn't have the nipples, I would like it a lot more. Um, the 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 sculpting it looks tough it looks sleek the black belt's interesting because it, it it starts to bring that whole solid black look but then the yellow pops because that's the only color on the suit the sonar suit I gave a seven and a lot of it's because it looks cool I don't like how silverish gray it is but I really love the bat on it it's a huge bat but it's a good looking bat um right. and then you and know, there's no I nipples. Just gotta... There's, right. no nipple, there's no nipples and, on the sonar suit. Yeah, um, and I just got to say that the um, the Robin suit in in Batman Forever looks really cool. Um, to actually have the the red and green, and him have a full body suit instead of um, short shorts and freaking pixie boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the overall films I gave eight. His overall film because I have a lot of love and ways, but it can kind of on a good day, on a bad day, but it's enjoyable. I feel like it has the most roundabout, just funness to it. Um, the score I gave an eight. It's a really good score. Um, you know, it's it's not Elfman, but it is catchy and it is really strong. Jania's breakdown persona she said a seven, Bruce Wayne a seven, voice she gave a five, gadgets she gave a six, Batmobile is a five. Panther suits a five, sonar suits a seven, overall films a seven, score she put nine. Our good friend, Mr. Brian, Big Bad Bry, Persona an eight, Bruce Wayne a seven, voice an eight, gadgets an eight, Batmobile a five, <laughs> uh, the suit, Panther suit a seven, sonar a six. Interesting. Um, our good friend Nate over here, see what he says, Persona a seven. Bruce an eight, voice a six, gadget an eight, Batmobile a seven, Panther suit an eight, sonar a seven, overall films a seven. Nice. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. So now we go on to Chase's favorite Batman, George Clooney. (laughs) <laughs> yeah um i thought that was a really really good point that this is the one that you would want to show your kids and shoemaker is on record saying that they intentionally made this way more campy unlike i mean it's almost like a whole different superhero compared to like 89 if you watch it and they oh, did yeah. that intentionally um so but that being said i uh i think Clooney taps into something that kilmer did not and keaton did not that i think christian bale pulled from um i don't like his batman persona but his bruce wayne i thought was just magnificent so i gave him a five on the batman persona a nine on the bruce wayne um you know i think clooney's voice stayed with the bruce wayne kind of thing it's like the same Um, voice the whole time like right i always go back to the hey hi freeze i'm batman like there's no change there so (laughs) I think that is such a strong, like, Bruce Wayne voice that it works for that movie. So I gave that a seven, even though there was no, like, freeze. <laughs> uh, the gadgets and Batmobile uh, sucked, three and three. Suits were even worse. Uh, two in the main suit. Heat suit, just for the creativity, I gave it a four. 
Overall film, I gave it a three and the score gave it a six. Um, but I really liked Clooney's portrayal of Bruce Wayne. Uh, more to say as it comes. James, go. Uh, Batman persona, uh, a five, very, not, not very strong. Um, uh, Bruce Wayne, definitely stronger. Um, he got a six, uh, you know, him and him and, um, Kilmer had good Bruce Wayne personas. Uh, his voice, I, I went with a one because, you know, he, it's just right. his voice. He didn't do anything. Um, the gadgets, I gave a seven, There's some creativity. Um, and then, you know, with all of the anti-freeze things that they use to, um, the Batmobile is a five. Um, it's very, it, it was very interesting and it was a cool toy when I had it when I was a kid. Yeah, it was. Um, the suit sucked. The the cowl sucked. The yeah. the black oval with the black bat sucked. Um, the the heat suit I gave a five. It was a little cooler. That was about right. it. The yeah. heat suit was cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, the overall film um, a five, and that's mostly because Arnold is making puns the entire time. Nice. Nice. Horrible puns. Yes. Um, and the music, you know, I, I don't even remember much of the music it, from it's that. A, uh, it's a cut and paste of Batman Forever. Yeah, yeah. and, it, it and really even is. the soundtrack was, you know. It's, it's the same thing. Other yeah, than the not, as, songs, not as good. <laughs> the, the, the score for Batman Forever and Batman Robin are the exact same score. Um, the screenplay is almost the same outline beats. Just the dialogue changes. It's very interesting yeah. to look at. They just used it more effectively in Batman Forever than they did in Batman and Robin. I think you can argue either way because I feel like Batman Forever is such the transitional movie of we're still trying to be a little Burtonish, and then by Batman and Robin, like we're going more full on camp. All right, no, I mean the the music is all. Oh, okay, I got they, you. They used the the music more effectively in Batman Forever than they did in Batman and Robin. I will agree with that. Um, All right. I think I it just feels like it was since it was so comical and so campy that the music almost felt the same. It just enhanced those beats, you know. Mhm. Okay, here we go. Batman Persona is a 4. Bruce Wayne is a 7. And what I liked about this movie in particular is this is the first movie where Bruce doesn't dwell on his parents. It's more of the fear of loss of Alfred and his relationship with Alfred. Um, voice, I gave a three because he said it's the same thing the entire time. It's just George with a mask, George without a mask. Gadgets, I put a six. Batmobile, I put a six. I like this Batmobile, but I hate that it's a one-seater and I hate that it's an open top. But I like kind of the look of it as far as the length. and the solidness of it. And I've watched a, a documentary is talking about like this Batmobile is very reminiscent of the 1930s. And I kind of like the fins on the back, the way they did it, but the open top and the one seater didn't make sense to me. Um, the suits, I put a five for the main suit. And the reason I like, because it's a little bit more blue. It's a black and blue kind of mix than it is just straight black. Um, yeah, again, I want my Batman to not look human. And so... I agree with that. And I, I just... I, I totally agree with that. And that's why it's such a contradictory because I'm like, that's what I want. But in this film, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> Correct. Uh, his gloves look kind of cool too. Um, the way his like... I don't, I don't know, not fins, but like... I don't know what you'd call them on his gauntlets. Gauntlets. Um, his heat suit, I put a six. Once again, there's no nipples on it, I don't think. And there's a giant bat. Uh, overall films a six, scores the same as Batman Forever. Jania put Persona, six. Bruce Wayne is seven. Voice, four. Gadget, seven. Batmobile, she put an eight. Uh, suits, five. And then seven. Overall film a six. She put, uh, nine, same as forever, much like me. <laughs> we'll see what Brian says. Ready? Here we go. Persona, a one. 
Bruce huh. Wayne, a two. Voice, a one. Gadget, six. Batmobile, seven. Interesting, Brian. Main, main suit, a three. Heat suit, a two. Interesting. I love Brian's thoughts. He's a fan of nipples, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Nate says, <coughs> excuse me. Nate says, Persona, six. Bruce Wayne, eight. Voice five, gadget seven, Batmobile five, main suit a six, heat suit a five, overall film a five. Now, with all jokes aside, it is time for who I believe is Chase's favorite. So Chase, take it away. Well, yeah, we got Christian Bale who begins Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, so Batman Persona, I gave it a 10. Bruce Wayne, I gave that a 10. Voice comes in at seven. Gadgets. Come in at seven, which looking back probably should be a little higher. Um, Batmobile gave it an eight. Um, Suits, Batman Begins, I give it a 10. Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, I drop all the way down to three. Not a fan of the new suit that they uh, displayed in the Dark Knight in the last movie. Overall films, I give them a nine. And the score, uh, I, I, I went out and bought the CDs. Yes, CDs. Um, whenever this film was released, so I, 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 I gotta give it a 10. Um, this, uh, yes, they are, it, keep it simple, this is my favorite iteration of on film Batman, um, played by the actor I think did the best job of navigating Batman and Bruce Wayne and what Bruce Wayne needs to do to s- keep being Batman. Um, Loved it. Loved the world they created. I loved I, – I, yeah, big fan right here. All right. James. Um, I gave his persona an 8, his Bruce Wayne an 8, um, his voice a 5. He uh, His Batman Begins voice is good, um, but once it goes to the <laughs> Dark Knight and then the Dark Knight rises, it just gets so much worse. Um. <laughs> Uh, the gadgets, I gave it a seven, the Batmobile, a seven, um, the, the Batman begins and the dark Knight suit. I gave both a six, um, for different reasons. Um, I like them both. Uh, the, the main thing I like about the, uh, the second costume is that, they finally made a costume where Batman can turn his head. Um, but the rest of the costume, I mean, I like the idea of the different layers, the different levels of protection and stuff, the way they explained it away. I mean, I like it and it's problematic as well when you have to explain everything away. I mean, here's the ironic part about it. It looks like hockey pads. It yeah. literally, <laughs> his new suit, he's like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Maybe I should wear <laughs> hockey pads. It looks a little bit more like that the kind of pads that a catcher would wear if he, you know. Oh yeah. Maybe that that was why he was like I don't wear hockey pads, I wear baseball pads. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. so overall films, I mean, it's a fantastic trilogy. Uh I gave it a 9. Um score, I gave it a 9. It's I mean, it's Hans Zimmer. Uh mm. just, yeah. It's a great video. music. Great score. James, do you uh, like Christian Bale? Christian Bale. So <sighs> Christian Bale, I would say, is my second favorite Batman, but it's basically a tie between him and Keaton for me. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge fan of Tim Burton and everything he does, just his style, his aesthetic. I mean, it's just I, – I love it. Um, and then these movies were so well done, and Christian Bale was so great. Um, like, they're two different ones, but I like them both so much, so equally. Look, I um, I'll I'll say this. I know we're only doing live action Batman, but Kevin Conroy's portrayal hey. um is super high on my list too. Hey, he's he's on this list and the is. and the honorable mentions, but and I was gonna save some talk for him, but yes, yes, um, yes. All right, so here we go. Christian Bale, uh, Batman persona. I gave an eight point five. But it teeters towards a nine, especially in Begins. I feel like there's a difference in like the way he is in Begins to where he is 
in the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. So that's kind of well, where I'm trying to average it out. Right. Um, well, Begins is is the is like the best Batman movie that they've ever made. Yes, like strictly Batman movie. Dude, Batman eighty nine is a Batman movie. Hey, we'll get there. <laughs> um, and it, I love Begins, but okay, yeah, it, we'll get his, there. Tyler his, says his the host Bruce, says we'll get there. His his Bruce Wayne, I put a seven. Uh, his voice is wait, you put Bale's Bruce Wayne at a seven? Yeah. Is that, so you put that below Kilmer's Bruce Wayne? Uh, yeah. And you Tyler. know why? I know. I, I don't know why. Tell me, please. Uh, I don't either. But I just <laughs> – the problem is – okay, because the problem is if I looked at this as individual movies, if I said Batman – if I looked at Batman Begins, it would be a nine. If I looked at The Dark Knight, it would be an 8.5. But then where we are with Rises, I feel like just kind of drags it down. So if I'm, if I'm doing like an average thing because – like Kilmer did a one and done. Bale did a whole trilogy that's an arc. So I'm trying to like look at and evaluate oh, the different – per you know what I'm saying? Like the way Bruce is throughout all three films. And you know like – and also I have to take in the fact that this Bruce Wayne also too like as a character, he's not Batman for the long haul. He's 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 there to inspire, to fight, and then drop out. So Dude, I I can't believe you like – Kilmer is Bruce Wayne better than Christian Bale. Hey, I think I just gave a very good breakdown and of where my averages come from. Okay, I had to find the mean, the median, and the mode here. Okay, <laughs> uh, bro, but like, oh my gosh. Okay, so what we see Christian Bale do with Bruce Wayne is give you the business side of Val Kilmer, give you the party boy of George Clooney, and give you the like normal Bruce Wayne. We see that Keaton has. It's literally all of them. But then we in see, every movie, every but the, movie. But then and we see then, him whine about Rachel Dawes. Then we see him complain about not wanting to do it. Then we see him brush off the the importance of the Joker. And then we see him become a recluse who doesn't keep fighting as a broken person. He hides in his mansion. It was like, done like he essentially purged the city. Yeah. It was a Batman that had won and that gotten like cranky and broken. It's I, almost like Luke in The Last Jedi. I mean, it, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I have to average it, but I don't discredit oh, wow. what you're saying. Okay. I will give it a 7.8. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you, if I looked at just Batman Begins, yes. But I just, I do not I like think that's where his best Bruce Wayne. His best Bruce Wayne is in Dark Knight. Mm, I, mean, I can see that. I just I, – I just – I don't like Rises that much. The more I watch it and think about it, it works for the trilogy. Yeah. That's um, fair. That's fair. James, where are you at on this? Wait. I'm, I'm still going. <laughs> well, this is want, huge. I want to – I want to just like – I want to hear James. All right, James. On this. Chime it in. Um, so, I mean, on his Bruce Wayne, I liked I liked a lot of things about his Bruce Wayne. He used Bruce Wayne as a way to further some of his goals, um, looking into the – Organized crime, um, you know, that's the only reason that he met with Lau so he could get a look at their books. Um, also, he's good with calculations, so he needed that. <laughs> I, I said that the other day. <laughs> I, swear, I, was, I said, I'm good with calculation. Yeah. <laughs> um, James, just for a quick throw out, I want to say this. In college, I lived in a house with Chase and like – I don't know how many other dudes, like four maybe because there was a couple people who just kind of rotated in and out. It's a long story. Yeah. But when this movie came out on home release, I was working at Blockbuster. So I got it like three weeks in advance. So I had it at the house. And I think from like October to maybe January, it was constantly playing in somebody's room in the house. Because then when the movie came out, like officially, I think everyone bought it. So our house has constantly had the Dark Knight in it somewhere. Right. (laughs) Thanks. It's still my go-to movie when I'm not feeling well or just want something on in the background. It's Dark Knight. I, you know, it, it's a good movie to have on whether you're paying attention to it or not. It's actually on right now. No, <laughs> he, he's like, and I just press play. Ayo. All right. So, okay. Tyler thinks that Val Comers are better Bruce Wayne than Christian Bale. Okay, continue. I just wanted to repeat that statement. 
uh <clears throat> his voice in Batman Begins is an eight. In the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, it's a five. His gadgets are an eight. Yeah. Batmobile, I put a six point five. Mm-hmm. And to me, because it's not a Batmobile, they call it the Tumbler, and as soon as they did that, it became the Tumbler. That's true. It, was, it wasn't the Batmobile. And it, it's an awesome vehicle, but it doesn't have the aesthetic of like looking like a bat or anything like that. I mean it's BA, but it's the Tumbler. Uh his suits, his Batman Beyond or Batman Beyond <laughs> Batman <laughs> Begins suit is an eight point five. Uh the Dark Knight is a six and overall films are a nine and the score is a nine. And then Jania has Persona an eight, Wayne an eight, uh begins at suit an eight, five for the for the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Gadgets a nine. Batmobile she put a seven. Um suits eight. The dark um the Dark Knight I lost track of my thought, but uh the Batman Begins suit is an eight. The Dark Knight Dark Knight Rises suit is a seven. Overall film she has a nine, score she has an eight. So let's go over to uh beautiful shining light that is Brian. Batman Persona is an eight. Bruce Wayne is a nine. Voice. He did not distinguish the voice like we have. He put a two. Yeah. Uh, gadgets an eight. Batmobile. He put a one. Mm-hmm. Uh, suits. The begin suit. He has a five and the dark night and rises a three. Ooh. See, I wish he was here to like justify his stuff. Dang I can it, Ryan, see the voice dark. in the Batmobile. Like that, that makes sense. Like I can see that makes more sense than your. Kill whatever bail take. All right, that'll be on my. That'll be what Chase will say at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, he thought he Kilmer over bail. <laughs> yeah, he thought Kilmer was a better Bruce Wayne than Bail. I'm just shocked. Still, <laughs> I got it. I mean, after all these years, I still got to shock you somehow. All right, <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Nate here. Uh, Persona a nine, Bruce Wayne a seven, voice a nine. Hmm. He didn't distinguish. Gadgets a nine, Batmobile a nine, suits an eight for Begins, an eight for The Dark Knight. Overall, films a nine. Look, I I loved how in the Tumblr it was everything in one, right? It was the yeah, like that was super cool. Um, I love in Begins, uh, where he just like drives through like the cement medium and they, yep. they lose them. He's like, Oh no, where did it go? Uh, like when they're on like the highway or whatever. Um, I'm so I think practic- if you're trying to make Batman practical and grounded, the tumbler is the way to go. But if you, I just like, but I don't really think that's the Batman essence of Batman, Batman 89 Batmobile, in my opinion is the quintessential Batmobile. Everyone else is just trying to figure it out. And that's, that's a good, uh, segue into a point that I'll make here. Uh, sure. our next one is Affleck appearing in BBS, Suicide Squad, Justice League, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. So Chase, go ahead with Ben Affleck's Batman. So this is the kind of just like ho hum middle of the road Batman, in my opinion. Um, Batman Persona is a seven. Bruce Wayne is an eight. Um, I think Ben Affleck. Uh, can can pull the Bruce Wayne off. Um, his voice, I I love the modulator in the bat suit. Yeah. Um, but I don't. That's not his voice. Voice. It's just like a gadget. So I I gave a high score to the gadget as an eight, and his voice is mm. six. Okay. I mean, I can uh, see that rationale. Yeah. Um, Batmobile is a seven. Um, and I, I'm not gonna lie, they're just like so many suits. I had a hard time remembering what they were. Um, and so I just did a bunch of sevens and sixes because <laughs> hey. none of them were like awful. Um, but I, I think the more letters that were by the suit, I probably was like, huh? Mm-hmm. So Batman vs. Superman, I gave it a seven. Armored was a six. Nightmare seven. That was cool. The desert look. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Justice League's. Zack Snyder Justice League was a six. 
Armored Justice League, Zack Snyder Justice League, I gave it a five. Um, so that's kind of where I landed with Ben Affleck. I would like to see a solo Affleck pretty, pretty badly. I think more so than what we're getting in a couple weeks. Mm, interesting. I mean, I don't think there's anyone that really disagrees with you. And I'm saving all my thoughts on in a couple of weeks for after we see it. And then I'm going to go back and fill in my scorecard part uh, for the Batman. But James, you go with your love affair with Affleck. Yeah, well, this is yeah, this is where me and Chase differ here. Uh, ben Affleck is uh, my favorite Batman. Uh, yeah, he he looks. I mean, he looks like the animated series Batman uh, yep. brought to life. Um, the Batman persona, I gave a ten. You know, uh, <laughs> Chase had mentioned like Batman shouldn't look human. I mean, Ben Affleck in that suit um, and some of the things he does, he just he doesn't appear human. Yeah. Um, he's, he's massive, uh, in that suit. Um, I, think, Bruce... I just want more, I just want more of his Batman, I think. Right. It, Maybe I need like, to watch it again. I don't know. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying, because it's like, you get enough to like, I'm really invested, but I, I want more. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy because BVS is basically a Batman movie. Um, yes. For the most part, you know, and, and it makes you want to see more. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree. I would rather us have gotten or, or be getting the Ben Affleck solo Batman film. Um, and I mean, that's as much with him as well as, um, Manginello as Deathstroke in that yes. movie. I mean, yes, that that's the one I want, James. Just, yes, that James. That would have been just crazy. Yes, I don't want to see disfigured villains. I don't want to see like a. I, I want to see Deathstroke. I want to see yes, that's what I want, James. Yes, yeah, just methodically taking apart his life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce Wayne. Um, I gave that a ten. Uh, he was really good at al- almost playing like drunk, um, yep. playboy. He was. Uh, he was himself. Yeah. They were like, um, what if you just played yourself in the scene? But it says Bruce Wayne. No, it just, it's been, it's been Affleck. They were like, he was like, guys, are we going to start rolling? Ben, we already shot it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just right. shooting well, the breeze. His, yeah. Like, like the party scene, um, his, his transition from being drunk, lost Bruce Wayne yeah. to switching over to, uh, talking to Alfred serious and then he goes upstairs and then his confrontation with um uh his, his gal gadot yeah talking about gal gadot um basically objectifying her uh just to play up that that angle to and, quote and he, i mean he quote, speaks the truth but to quote alexander knox what a dick <laughs> right <laughs> um yeah it, and um his voice uh i gave a 9 he's got a really uh i like the modulator yes but it just kind of um accentuates the low gruff voice that he's putting on uh huh so i like that and that that as well as uh so the gadgets i gave an 8 i love that they like make all the gadgets themselves him and alfred um they they put in all the work to to use everything and then he did a lot of um, detective work, especially in BVS. Um, and then he had the tools in Zack Snyder's Justice League to um, to allow them to do everything that they needed to do in there. So his gadgets are an eight. Uh, the Batmobile, I mean, it's it's like my second favorite Batmobile, live action Batmobile. Um, I mean, like a tank, and it can fly, and it can chase down. It can chase down a, a fleet of chargers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, the suits. I mean, I I don't have a problem with the big bat. Uh, I think the gray and the black looks amazing. Um, the cowl is made to look scary, and the short ears. I like it. Um, so. The suits he wears really cool. Um, those it's an eight. Uh, the nightmare I give it an eight as well. I mean, it's that suit with 
that desert look going on, which is really yeah. cool. Um, Justice League, they changed the, the cowl a bit, especially in, it's, it's more noticeable in Justice League than Zack Snyder's Justice League. So I gave it a seven and the armored look, I, because it was a step up from that, because the way they changed that cowl, I gave it an eight. Um, and then it's Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL scores music. I mean, it's another nine. Yeah. See, uh, all right, we'll, I'll, I'll get there. Okay, here we go. His Batman persona for me is a nine. His Bruce Wayne, a nine. His voice is a 10. I love the modulator. I love the gruffness. But what I also like from like thinking about a production thing is it allows the actor to deliver the lines and then in post you add the modulator. So you don't end up with, where's the fur? <laughs> you must have friends. You know, you don't end up with that as a line delivery, uh, which to me still boggles me that they didn't just fix that in ADR, but whatever. Uh, that probably was fixed in ADR. <laughs> <laughs> the gadgets is an eight. Uh, the Batmobile is an 8.5 because this Batmobile is like someone looked at the Anton first 89 and looked at the Tumblr and says, it was Patrick Topless, but he was like, I'm going to blend them together. And that's what this yeah. Batmobile is. Like, this is the baby from hell. Yeah. From the, it's <laughs> like, it Batmobile. has that long sleekness power. The only thing I really don't like on this Batmobile is the uh, exhaust port. The fire just looks – like in the movie, it looks more digital than actual fire. And it's very small. It doesn't have that awesome, huge yeah. engine part like every other Batmobile does in the back. Well, what's uh, really sweet is because it's got those big old tires that stick out to the side. Like when it runs through the building, it just – it's got little armor. It's got uh, wheel guards that come down. Yes. Protect the tires as it crashes through. Everything. Um, <laughs> everything. Exactly. Everything. Uh, the suits. BVS is a nine. I don't, I, I'm not a huge fan of the short ears, but it works. I don't like – the fat square bat. I prefer a bit more round bat, but armored. I put a six. Uh, Nightmare is a seven. Uh, Justice League is an eight point five, and then armored Justice League is an eight. The score I put is a five, and that's because the Batman part of the score I think is very weak. Because I mean, the theme that Junkie XL basically made for Batman is. <laughs> That's it. That like, was it's good. Like, yeah, I know. Thank you. Uh, and then, so let me give you the breakdown of Jania. Now, if I look at the whole scores, it's trickier, but I was just looking at the Batman part. It's also complicated because in Justice League, they just reused – Elfman just reorchestrated his 89 score, you know, and repurposed it. Uh, but for Jania, she put Persona, 9. Bruce Wayne an eight, voice a nine, gadgets an eight, Batmobile an eight, BVS suit eight point five, armored a seven, nightmare a six, Justice League an eight, Justice League armored a nine, score a five. Brian, persona a nine, Bruce Wayne a ten, voice an eight, gadget seven, Batmobile a eight, BVS suit a ten, armored a five, tactical uh in Justice League a two, and Justice League itself a nine. And that's where we say goodbye to Brian because he didn't do the honorable mention and secondary parts. Uh, our good friend from Down Under, Mr. Nate here, has Persona a 10, Bruce a 9, Voice 10, Gadget a 9, Batmobile 8, Suits, BVS a 10, Armored an 8, Nightmare a 7, uh, Justice League a 10, Armor Justice League an 8. All right. So... The second part of the score card is a little bit more just rounded, and we're just going to kind of go through uh, the secondary characters. Now, if you don't have all these figure filled out, it's fine. I'm just a completist where I have to mention every version possible. So some of these will probably have a pass, um, especially even Jania's. She was like, pass, no comment, pass. Uh, but I just like to be a completist person and have everything listed. So we're going to talk about Alfred Pennyworth. So we're we'll start with Chase, Michael Goff. Go. Yeah, I gave him a ten. I loved his portrayal of Alfred. I gave Michael Caine of the Dark Knight trilogy a nine, and Jeremy Irons an eight. And I don't have a 
good enough. <laughs> He's like, pass, pass, and pass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ian Abercrombie, Sean Pertwee, and Jack Ben. And if I even pronounce those right, I just – no reference point. I, I've never seen any of those. I haven't well, – I didn't watch Gotham. Sorry. It's all good. So I said I'm a completist. I have to have him on there. I wouldn't feel yep. right. But James, love, love Michael Go. Yeah. Uh, Michael Go, uh, Michael Goff. I got uh, Goff. eight. Um, I've heard it both ways. Yeah, I've I've heard it mostly Goff, so that's just kind of the way I go. <laughs> oh, um, the way I go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the way. <laughs> um, yeah, he's an eight. Michael Kane, I gave a seven. Um, Jeremy Irons, I gave an eight. Uh, Ian Abercrombie, uh, I gave a five. Uh, Sean Pertwee, a seven, and Jack Bannon, a six. Um, what I saw from him on Pennyworth, I liked, but I didn't get to finish the first season. Um, I'm looking forward to catching up with it on HBO Max. And uh, Sean Pertwee was really cool to kind of see. He was like the first live action uh, Alfred to be like the in militarized the Alfred. Yeah. Totally. All right. So me, Michael here, I gave it eight. Michael Caine, an eight. Jeremy Irons, a nine. Ian Abercrombie, a two. Sean Pertwee, a seven. Jack Bannon, a seven. Jania gave Michael Goff a ten. Michael Caine, an eight. Jeremy Irons, an eight. Pass on Ian Abercrombie. Sean Pertwee, a nine. And Jack Bannon, she put an eight. Jeremy Irons is my favorite. Um, what I like is about each Alfred and Bruce's relationship. Michael Goff is very much a very fatherly, over like grandfatherly type per- person. Uh, no. Michael Caine is very much a strong fatherly figure. Yeah, that's that's what I would say. I would say Michael Goff was more of like a straight service butler. Like in that eighty nine, yeah. he's almost like dismissive of him. Um. But Michael Caine is I, I I see more of like the fatherly figure. Oh, and Jeremy I mean, Irons is more like a coworker. I I J- yeah, that's what I say. Jeremy Irons is like that uncle. He's like that uncle you have. Um, see, the thing I like about Jeremy Irons is is there so they they have their interactions um, and the way that he talks to Bruce, um, trying to get him to open up about what he's really doing, but also. Um, Ben Affleck's Bruce has that reverence for him that he gets him the cup of coffee. Yes. Not the butler getting him a cup of coffee. Bruce got Alfred a cup of coffee. Yeah. They had, they, they, I look at it more as a, a team. Like he said, coworker, like, like that uncle that's like your buddy kind of thing. Um, is how I, I look at it very much. I just reread all three volumes of the Earth One Batman. Much more in line, I think, with that Alfred and Bruce dynamic. Um, let's go to Nate. He filled his out. He put Michael Goff a seven. Might have to message him about that. <laughs> uh, Michael <laughs> Kane an eight. Jeremy Irons an eight. Ian Abercrombie a five. Sean Pertwee an eight. Jack Bannon a seven. Now, the next one I put just for fun, uh, just to point out how many Bruce Waynes there has been, but this is called the Honorable Mention Bruce Wayne. It's all the other versions of Bruce Wayne that's popped up. Chase, you can lead if you have anything to say, or if it's just one giant pass, it's okay. Yeah, just Kevin Conroy's a 10. (laughs) (laughs) And James. Um, Well, well, I mean, can I explain why he's a 10? Oh, we'll go back there. (laughs) Okay, 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 we'll go back there. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I think we'll talk about him after we all list it off. Um, David Mazus, uh, he's a five. I mean, he's a kid, you know, and, oh, okay. and, they, okay. and they tried to push him into being, into learning the things that he would need to learn to become, uh, Batman. Um, Ian Glenn from Titans, uh, miscast. Uh, I mean, he's, he's delivered some really good lines and had some good, um, interactions with Nightwing, um, but that's about it. Uh, he's a five as well. Um, the kid from the Joker, uh, I mean, he was he was there. So. 
Um, <laughs> well, <it's laughs> he was Bruce Mitch. Wayne. He's a three. Um, uh, Warren Christie from Batwoman. I mean, that wasn't even him. That was exactly. But I so, had to, I have to have it listed because I'm a completist. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it's same thing. A three. Uh, and yeah, Kevin Conroy um, is ten. Finally, get to see him as a live action Bruce, and you know, I am not at all upset with what they did with him. What Wait, kind when of was the live action? Was but in the fact that he wore that the 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 brace the the full body suit the full body braces that he wore in Kingdom Come it was just fantastic. Did I miss something? Uh, Kevin Conroy appeared as a different Earth Bruce Wayne in the future during the crisis event in the crossover. Um, so in crisis part two, the Batwoman episode, they actually, it's actually Kevin Conroy in live action as Bruce Wayne. Uh, uh will you send me that link? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You uh, got to check it out. It's really cool. He, um, he does a new he does a new voice uh for the, for this version of this character. He's a very old Bruce Wayne and very very dark knight very returns. Very dark and jaded. <laughs> gotcha. It's an interesting cuz it's like a different like as much as he's played the character um it's a different take on the character. Nice. Uh So, let me I'll just while we're talking Kevin Conroy, I will give his Batwoman performance um a seven just because of the darkness to the characterization but his overall history of the character is a 10 like there's there's nothing else um that comes close to touching what he's done not even um, val kilmer not even val kilmer wow all right <laughs> well there there it is if they had given him this a little bit uh in his youth he could have done a lot more with it uh, <clears throat> but my other breakdowns for honorable mention Bruce Wayne's David Mazuz, I gave a seven. Junia gave us an eight. Ian Glenn, I gave a one. I hate that guy in that <laughs> character. Uh, Junia gave him a three. Uh, <laughs> Dante Pereira Olson from Joker, a one. Pass on Junia. Warren Christie is a one. Pass for Junia. Kevin Conroy, she gave a seven because she's just looking at his Batwoman performance. Uh, but overall, the ten, just like mine. Now, who is Batman's ally that doesn't wear a costume? <clears throat> Mr. Gordon. James Gordon. So, Chase, give us your Gordons. Pat Hingle, uh, again, more nostalgia than anything. Uh, he's in Batman. He's in Batman Returns Forever and uh, Robin. Really a kind of unprecedented continuity um, among among these movies. Uh, I give him a nine. Just He's just there doing his thing, man. Just doing his thing. I give him a nine. Uh, Gary Oldman, I think, is the best. Gordon, uh, get, he he got the ten. Um, ben McKenzie, I don't know why. I don't think I meant to put this a nine. I think I meant to make it a six. But either way, I have it here as a nine. And then J.K. Simmons, uh, I, I gave that a five as well. I I don't want him as this role in every superhero movie. Um, find a different shtick, Simmons. You already got this one in in Spider Man. And you got it carrying over to different. Just you don't need to be Gordon. Just give it up. I think I think we'll get a we'll actually get to see him be Gordon come December, so we'll actually be able to evaluate in the Flash, him. right? No, uh, he's he's James Gordon, Batgirl. Um, dude, he, I I need to off off the record you to tell me what all's going on because <laughs> it's, it's so much and it just seems like they're just throwing crap against the wall. In DC seems to have a lot of good things going on, like the like streaming, like episodic stuff that I just don't know what's going on. So, so that's a whole other conversation. This is a theory that uh, a friend of mine have kind of talked about is that whatever happens in the Flash movie, I think is going to blend the universe or even the bat side of the universe so that after the flash movie, somehow JK Simmons is Gordon and Keaton is Batman. Somehow that's how it's going to turn out. Cause but then apparently on the set of Batgirl, they have the Ben Affleck, Affleck Batmobile. Batmobile. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying the blending is going to happen somehow. Because it might just be easier to use that Batmobile in movies and on stunts now than the 89. Um, 
But James, give us give us your Gordons. Um, Pat Hingle, uh, I gave a five. I mean, <laughs> I love I love him. He's great. You know, uh, it's it's so cool to watch him be Gordon, Gordon in all of them and and get get less. Less, um, less useful time. as the time goes on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, he got a five. Gary Oldman is the best Gordon we've had. I gave him an eight. Um, Ben McKenzie, uh, from Gotham, I gave him a six. Uh, I, they could have done more and different things. Uh, I think he would have been better if they would have done some diff- some things differently. Um, and J.K. Simmons, I mean, he was he had some good interactions when we saw him. I'm looking forward to seeing what he gets to do. But um, I mean, at this point, we saw so little of him. I can only give him a six. Okay, so going backwards here, J.K. Simmons, I'm right there with you, a six, and so is Jania. Because of what very little we got to see of him. Uh, ben McKenzie, I put a seven. Jania put an eight. Gary Oldman, we both put nine. Pat Hinkle, Jania put a four. I put a three. Mm-hmm. Okay. In Batman 89, he's good. In Batman Returns, he's like, somebody send the signal. Thank you. You're here, Batman. In Batman Forever, he's applauding as Batman's going to fight crime for him and shakes the policeman's hand on the roof. In Batman and Robin, he's like, I have the keys right here in my pocket. (laughs) So, yeah. I'm sorry, bro. I'm glad you're there for continuity, but your Gordon didn't do anything. Dude, Uh, he's the, like, hinge piece in the Flashpoint movie. (laughs) That's what is going to be the, like, that. that's it. That's going to break time and space. Yeah, they're gonna uh, di- digitize him like they did the um, Tarkin and, and oh, Leia and stuff. Well, you know, with with Simmons being Gordon in in Batgirl um, and Batgirl being Barbara Gordon, it's gonna be we're gonna we should get a ample chance to see um, see some of what he's got going on. All right, so uh, Nate's Gordon's here. You put Hinkle at a six, Oldman at a nine, McKenzie at an eight, JK at an eight. All right, so now we're going to just kind of go through the last three here are the villains, um, you know, hitting at the major villains that will be appearing in the Batman, and that's why we use these three. Penguin. Chase, take it away. Gave Burgess Meredith a nine. I, I grew up watching reruns of 66 and just really – uh Enjoyed, enjoyed that. Um, enjoyed his portrayal as well. Uh, and then gave Danny, Danny DeVito an eight, um, for as weird and Tim Burton as that was. Um, I didn't watch Gotham, so I don't know who Robin Lord Taylor is. All right, James. Um, I gave them all an eight. Uh, I like all right, them moving all. On. <laughs> yeah, I, I like them all in, in different ways. Um, Burgess Meredith, uh, his performance is, is hysterical at times and um, just so campy. It's it's unreal. Um, Danny DeVito, I mean, he's great and and he was creepy and sleazy and uh, <laughs> gross. Yeah, <laughs> and Robin Lord Taylor, um, he was really good uh, in a different way. You know, he he came up, he rose through the ranks. He was still a sleaze and. He got where he needed to be, and and he was ruthless. So, yeah, I I gave him all an eight. They were all really good performances. All right, very very consistent man. I like it. Um, Burgess Meredith, I put a seven. Janita put a seven. Danny DeVito, I put a four. I hate the grotesque, like yeah, that's gross. The way they did Penguin, like to me, it's so. He is more of like a Penguin person, and it's a whole different persona that's almost like a new character jania put a uh, six for robin lord taylor i put uh an eight jania put a 10 she really loved his portrayal and his arc uh as the penguin uh nate has nine for burgess eight for danny and nine for robin lord taylor so now we're going on to the riddler yeah uh yeah i gave them all nines to be honest james 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I did. No, I gave him all nines. Um, oh, I, except for the Corey Michael Smith, I didn't watch Gotham. Um, so I actually don't have much, uh, m- uh I haven't seen John Aston as, uh, the Riddler from Batman 66. So he's in one episode. Oh, he's but, only in one. Yeah. Okay. He's in one episode, but because he did it, I had to include him on this. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't seen that episode. I've seen clips and, um, He's he's very different than Frank Gorshin, so they were they were yeah. Uh, I gave I mean I gave these guys all an eight as well. Um, I mean Frank Gorshin set the standard. Uh, Jim Carrey like he rolled with that too, but he was also just Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey. and Jim Carrey was great at the time. Um, Corey Michael Smith, I mean. You know, for Gotham, I mean, between Sean Pertwee, Robin Lord Taylor, and Corey Michael Smith, I mean, those three were really good characters on Gotham. Yes. So. I wish I could, Chase, if I could find like a really good like clip scenes of like them, those three, I'll send to you. Yeah. Because those three did very well in a show that was very hit and miss. Yeah, and and even a couple of and even a couple of the things they did with the Riddler were a little a little bit of a miss, but Corey Michael Smith did so good with whatever they gave him. Yeah. All right, so okay, cool. Riddler, Gorshin, I gave a nine. I love Frank Gorshin's Riddler. Yeah. The energy, the craziness, the, but the confidence at the same time. Janina gave a seven. Danny, did, or wait, sorry. John Aston, I put a two. Jania put a six. Uh, Corey, Jim Carrey, I have as a seven. Jania has as a nine. Corey Michael Smith, I have as an eight. Jania has as a nine. Our boy Nate over here. Gorshin has an eight. Aston has a seven. I have to write him that letter. Jim Carrey at a nine. And Corey Michael Smith as a nine. Now, our last, the Femme Fatale, who has a lot of people to mention. So let's have fun with this. Catwoman, take it away, Chase. Yeah, I think I was able to do all the 66. Catwoman's Julie Neymar gave a six. Lee Merriweather a nine. Eartha Kitt a nine. Shell Pfeiffer a nine. And Halle Berry a six. Oh, Cameron. Sorry. No, that was a skip. Lily Simmons a skip. And Anne Hathaway, I gave a seven. All right, all respectable. Yeah, we we kind of figured the Gotham thing you're going to skip on. So, <laughs> yeah. Why are there two Catwomans in Gotham? Because in the finale, they they skip ahead and they they age her up and they put a different actress to play Selena older. Uh-huh. I would recommend watching the finale of Gotham Chase just because you get a really good vibe of you get a the the finale for Gotham is like a pilot. It feels like it doesn't feel like the end of Gotham. It feels like the, the first episode of a new Batman show. It's mm-hmm. it's just it's really interesting to see how they did it. And the Lily Simmons, who's only in there for one of she did a really great job of being the older version of a character that we had been with for five years. Gotcha. Um, it's just a very interesting kind of that's the way they chose to go out with that show. But all right, James, do yours before I say too much. Um. So which which was the Catwoman in the Batman sixty six movie? In the movie is Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Yeah. Okay, she's the one I have most familiarity with. I've only ever seen clips that I can really recall that I can recall. You know, I I know when I was younger, I had seen Julie Newmar and Eartha Kitt, but I couldn't really tell you anything. Well, it's because the licensing thing, the movie was the only thing that was ever available to purchase and was on TV more. Um. Because I remember we, oh, my mom bought Zach and I the VHS, you know, so we had that playing, and then later on on FX they started showing the show. But even as a kid, I don't think I realized it was a different um, person. So, uh, right. Um, so I mean, Lee Merriweather is the only one I have any like real familiarity with. Um, so I mean, I give her, uh, I give her an eight. Can't really say much on the other two. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer is a 10. Um, 
I mean, her, yeah, everything about her performance was amazing. And the way her Catwoman, uh, just, yeah, it was, besides the supernatural element that we just, that they just kind of float in there and then, it, and then you just go with it. Um, Halle Berry, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's just a, that's a, that's a two. Um, it's, really? it's it's terribly it's terribly funny sometimes to watch. Um, uh, Cameron Bikendova, uh, I really liked her performance as a young Selena. Um, she she's a seven. Um, Lily Simmons, I mean, she got one episode, so it's just a, a five. Um, and Anne Hathaway, um, I mean, you know, she was Selena. Not not quite Catwoman. They just kind of hinted at it with the goggles and the ears. Um, but she got she got an eight. All right. Julie Newmar is at eight point five. Lee Merriweather's a nine. Eartha Kitt is a six. Michelle Pfeiffer is a seven. Halle Berry is a one. I couldn't do just a point five. Janine wouldn't let me. Cameron is a seven point five. Lily I put is a seven. Anne Hathaway is an eight. Janine's breakdown is Newmar seven, Meriwether seven, Eartha six, Pfeiffer six, Halle Berry a three, Cameron a nine, Lily a six, and Anna Hathaway a eight. And then our buddy Nate over here, Julie Newmar a nine, Lee Meriwether a eight, Eartha a six, Michelle a ten, Halle Berry a two, Cameron a eight, Lily a seven, and Anne Hathaway an eight. What a good time we had, fellas. Halle Berry only gets those extra points because she looks good in leather. <laughs> I, and on that note <laughs> Chase thank you for being here with us today for this inaugural episode we, yeah. we look forward to the to more Batman talk as we you know uh, definitely want to hear your quick thoughts or, or sound bit or something to shoot our way after you see the Batman you know hang on to your scorecard and fill out that bottom part and on your thoughts there and we're glad to we'll, be here as part of the, the network. Will do. Thank you so much for the invite. And we are so excited to have you guys on, on the Press Play Podcast Network as part of P3 uh, to kind of help us fill out and kind of put attention to our entertainment vertical. Um, we're launching a Marvel show next month. And actually, this is the first kind of time I've publicly said that on a podcast. It's Podcast 616. It's all about Marvel stuff. And so – um, really, really excited for what the future holds for the network. Excited to have you and James on. James, it's nice to officially pod with you and, and get to talk to you more, man. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, chatting with me. Yeah, absolutely. Had a good time. Didn't know we were going to be selling you on trying to watch Gotham either. <laughs> no, it's uh, fine. Uh, no, because, uh, you know, all the people on it, all the, the, all the actors did a fantastic job. Like Cameron Monaghan, the way he played. Oh yeah. Uh the Joker three times over. And um yeah, all all the actors did such a good job. I mean, besides cool. um Jada Pinkett Smith and yeah, Fish we, Mooney, but we you don't have talk to about... see that to understand. Well, I'll <laughs> add that to the list. Check us out, pressplaypodcast.com. I also it's my podcast, the Chase Smith Podcast. You can check that out on Apple Pod, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Tyler, thank you for the invite, brother. Appreciate it, man. Take care, Chase. All right. Bye. And to all of our good listeners, thank you. Uh, we are, like I said, we are psyched to be here and part of this new journey that we are on for Krypton Report. Um, James and I are excited and stoked and always looking for the next uh, challenge and looking forward to the Batman here soon to, f- yeah. you know, to, to finish out our, our scorecards to see where that might rank. We, we'll have to touch back in with everybody here, you know, and uh yeah and new chapter beginning i'm excited me too i you know i had thoughts and stuff but i really want to you know come back to that after we see the movie and where things kind of fall um then maybe we'll rank some things differently um we'll see so all right check us out krypton report and remember check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. 
We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. But also, if you love Superman and DC Comics, please listen to the following. The Last Sons of Krypton, Superman the Animated Podcast, Holy Batcast, The Geek of Steel, Digging for Kryptonite, The Aspiring Kryptonian, The All-Star Superfan Podcast, and Superboy the Legacy Podcast. Enjoy.